Okay. The uh, central limit theorem, um, I'm not going to go into detail about how to derive this formula, uh, but we're just going to use it. So what you have here, here's the formula for central limit theorem, and it's, uh, it's a z-score formula, but the, with a little hitch, a little difference. Okay, um, we're going to have um, samples. We're going to pick samples of data out of our population. So we might um, pick out 20 different samples instead of just one individual thing. And so I'll give you an example problem. But essentially, all you need to know is uh, mu here is my mean of the population. Okay, x bar is the mean we want to try and get out of our sample. N stands for the number that we're going to sample. So we're going to maybe, out of this bag of a hundred things, we're going to sample twenty of them. And sigma here is the standard deviation of the entire population. And z again is your z-score so that we can use a normal distribution for it. Okay. So the first thing we'll talk about here is, uh, let me pull this up, the standard deviation of the sample mean which is also called the standard error of the mean and uh, here's the, you know, it's sigma sub x bar. So the standard deviation of our sample mean, you know, sample mean is x bar. Standard deviation of the population is sigma. So together they mean the standard deviation of the sample mean, which is standard error. And again, sigma is your population, standard deviation, and n is the number that we're going to sample. Okay, so don't get this confused with the z-score we've been using. Um, the z-score we've been using up to this point is, um, you know, z equals x minus mu over sigma, where x is a single individual data point not a sample of data points. Um, U is your population mean like normal and sigma is the standard deviation of the population. So, um, so this is only used to find information about individual data. So you gotta be really careful that you don't get these confused. So let's jump into a problem so that you can kinda see how this is used. So let's say the average number of pounds that a person consumes a year Unless, I guess this would be meat, amount, pounds of something. The average number of pounds that a person consumes a year is 218.4 pounds. Assume, and that's for the whole population of the world, I don't know, whatever, uh, of the United States, of our small community in Arapahoe, the entire population of Arapahoe. And the sigma is 25 pounds. So the standard deviation is 25 pounds. And we'll assume that the data is normally distributed, so it looks like a bell curve. So first off, we'll find this situation. We'll use the central limit theorem. If a sample of 40 individuals is randomly selected, find the probability that the mean of the sample is less than 224 pounds per year. Okay, so in this case, for this problem, it's always you always want to draw a picture. So we'll draw what the situation is occurring. So we've got this set of normally distributed data where the mean um, of the entire population was 218.4. And uh, so that's mu. And we want the, I'll change here, maybe we want green, maybe. We want um, to find out this value up here at 
224, and we want to know what's the probability of of uh, choosing 40 people that our sample of these 40 people, the mean would be less than 224. So we want that whole green region figured out. And so we know that the number of samples we're going to take are 40. We know that the mean we want to be less than is 224. We know that our our population mean is 218.4. Wow, sorry. And our standard deviation is 25 for the whole population. So, let me take a picture of that. So if we go ahead and use the um, central limit theorem, which is z equals x bar minus mu over sigma divided by the square root of n, we'll go ahead and plug in our numbers to figure out our z-score. So our x bar, the number, the mean we want is 224 uh, minus the mu as 218.4 divided by 25 divided by the square root of our 40 samples. So at this point what you want to do is plug that into the calculator and make sure you are getting what I'm getting because it's very easy to make mess this up in the calculator but when I plug it in I get 1.417 make sure that you can plug that in and get the same thing very easy to make mistakes with parentheses and all in all these calculators. Okay, so once you have that 1.417, uh, we need to find the uh, um, the probability that goes with that. Now the I don't I have a picture, but it's kind of a poor one. There's my picture, kind of tough to see, but if you look at it, for 1.4 there's there it is, but it's tough to see. 1.42 uh, is right there. So what I'll do, um, my board it looks or my the page that I'm using looks something like this, where here's the mean, mu, and here's x, and my table is giving this this information right here. So you know you can go on the internet and find these. You can actually get calculators that do these for you and uh, so we have a probability from our mean to our uh, x data value of 0.4 uh, oops, 2, 2, 2 and then the rest of it the other half it wants anything less than that so it wants everything in here well this side here is 0.5 or 50 percent of the data so to find out uh, if we sample uh, 40, pe 40 people, um, what's, what's the probability that they'll consume less than 224 pounds of meat or whatever would be 0.9222 or 92 point two percent. So that's the chance that our the mean of 40 people that we choose would be less than 224 pounds. Okay, so let's compare that with um, the other one, the, the individual score. So find the probability that a person selected at random, a person, not a sample of people, just a person selected at random consumes less than 224 pounds per year. Okay, so to use so there we're going to use this formula. This is the z-score formula for individual people, not the whole sample or individual data points. So in our case, it's done the same thing, same way. So z is equal to 224 minus your mean of 218.4 divided by your standard deviation of 25. And notice in this case we don't use the standard error. 
Um, you don't divide by that square root of n. So you plug that in, 224 minus 218.4, divide that by 25, and you get 0.224. And my z-score table only goes to the hundredths place, so I'm just going to use 0.22. And again, yours might have more accuracy than that, but this is good enough for me. So you go 0.022. And I get 0 0.0871 if my glasses don't fail me. So 0 0.0871 is the probability of that occurring. 224. And again, it's, you know, my table um, is uh, going from the mean to the value. So this stuff right here. Well, we know half the data is 50 percent. So we're going to take 50 minus or 0 0.5 minus 0 0.0871. So 0.5 minus 0 0.0871. And when you do that, um, or excuse me, 0 0.5 plus 0 0.0871. I screwed that up. I apologize. Let me read you all that. I'm 11 minutes into this video. We're not stopping now. So 224. So we want all of this data, which is the probability of that is the 0 0.0871. And then we want all of this information, which would be half the data, the 0.5. So you add those together and you get 0.5871. So you have a 58.7% chance of selecting an individual that eats less than uh, 224 pounds of meat. Okay. And so that's kind of the difference between the two without getting into detail um, on why and how, because obviously that's going to take longer. But I hope this helps. I hope this sheds some light on the central limit theorem. Best of luck, and see you next time.